Thanks everyone for coming. If you don't know, I'm Bobby, the older brother of Ryan. And be, on the behalf of the groom and the bride, I would like to thank everyone here for attending this lovely wedding to end of 2016 in their first memories of 2017. Before I begin, Kelly, can you place your left hand on the table? And Ryan, place your right hand on the table. Over hers. Here. I know this is tough, but over hers. <laughs> Ryan, I'm honored to be part of this whole army that you call your wedding party. It's two tables full of your closest friends and family. I can confirm to you to you all that Ryan slept like a baby last night. <laughs> that is, he wet his bed twice. <laughs> and woke up crying, to, crying for his mommy multiple times. <laughs> Ryan... Ryan's the youngest of the family, and as the youngest, he had to catch up to my sisters, the twin terrors, and I, and he was always trying to prove himself. For the first part of my life, he felt like it was one against three, probably because it was. But that didn't last too long, because he found a friend, and his name was Paul. <laughs> And Paul was his imaginary friend. <laughs> now, every time one of us would go, you know, pick on him, Paul, he would bring Paul into the conversation. <laughs> it took quite a while to figure out who Paul was. <laughs> but we fi he finally told us it was his friend that hung out with him. <laughs> Till the day Paul just died. Uh, we, we don't... <laughs> One day he came and died. Electrocuted off a light pole, I, or a pole, right? Yeah. <laughs> There's multiple fond memories I've had with Ryan growing up. Whether it was building forts in our rooms or aggravating, it became two against two, aggravating our sisters while we were growing up. Since Ryan did everything he really wanted to and followed all three of us around every day. Growing up, when we moved to Mount Prospect, I believe you might have been five. Yeah. Three? Ooh. Younger than I thought, so I guess it won't be, yeah, you, you're not that weird then. It had been 90 degrees, and we're pulling and unloading into the new house in Mount Prospect, and some of the neighbors were out, and this crazed lunatic runs out of the house, or runs out of the car while we're loading, in snow boots, moon boots, the vinyl on the outside, I believe, what a moon boot is. <laughs> but he was always chasing. We grew up in the neighborhood. We we had a bunch of kids our age, and we always hung out together. At some point, I really thought Ryan should start making new friends his age, <laughs> and others too. <laughs> there was a soul Korean down the block, about two blocks. His name was Alex. He's back in the room. And they're still friends today from Push It. <laughs> On summer vacations, every year we would take a two-week vacation up to Wisconsin. <laughs> One week was at our aunt and uncles in Green Lake. Another week was at our grandparents in Delvin. There's a few Delvin people in here, I believe. Yeah. But since he was a few years older, he's always wanted to do it. And there, there's not much stuff going on in Wisconsin other than fishing or boating. But what are you going to do when you're, say, six? 
So I fish with my Uncle Ken in this table right here. And he did not want to, he thought Ryan was too young to go out on a boat fishing. But gave in, like a good uncle. And Ryan came along fishing one time, obviously early in his career of fishing. That didn't last too long. And we went on the lake. We fished a few moments later, or early, too quick to go in for my uncle Kenny. Ryan had to go to the bathroom. <laughs> you're male. My uncle said, well, I'm not going in, so you're going to have to go over the side of the boat. <laughs> Ryan, being the strong head in mind he is, he said, okay, I'm fine. I'll do that. We continue fishing, but we didn't hear any water hitting the lake. So we turned around and said, right, did you, did you go to the bathroom yet? Uh, yeah. Where, where did you go to the bathroom? We didn't think you did. Maybe the live well or in the boat? No. I didn't own zipper. I just peed in my pants. I didn't think I had to teach you everything, <laughs> but next, next time if David ever has to go to the bathroom or my kid, I will tell you to, to go outside of your pants. <laughs> Looking back, I probably tormented Ryan way too much in his life. He was... He was a bully, I think probably because of me tormenting him. And let me start over. Looking back, I probably tormented him too much, tormented it far too much. Since he couldn't really get back at me due to our massive size difference at the time. <laughs> I took, he took it out of his friends at school, I think. He was a bully in elephant, but he met his match one day, or probably after multiple days, who also had an older brother who probably tormented him too. One day, Ryan posed a question to me, what do I do with this arch nemesis? Michael Chernick. <laughs> I explained to him he has two options. Do nothing and continue the path of client heads, or combine powers <laughs> and become friends. I want to. I'm, I'm proud to say that they're still great friends today and tormenting each other today. But on the other hand, I'm sorry that everyone here had to look at his goofy ass face all day. <laughs> <laughs> it's impossible to summarize the last 31 years I've known Ryan, but I would like to say that over these years, he's been the best anyone could hope for in a brother. Admittedly, I'm his only brother, <laughs> other than Paul. <laughs> it's not the greatest service, but in my limited experience of brothers, I have to pretty much rate him 10 out of 10. He's short on affection, too, because that right hand is not still on <laughs> Kelly's left hand. So any of you are wondering why I place his hand on Kelly's. I can now reveal, as my final row, it is your great pleasure that I have been able to give you the last few moments in which you have had the upper hand on Kelly. I hope you enjoy it, because there certainly will be the last. <laughs> it's been a joy living, for those who don't know, we've lived together for the last four years, and see you and Kelly grow. I'm delighted to welcome Kelly into our family. Kelly, you look beautiful today, and you make my brother so happy. 
Thank you for doing that. All right, let's wrap this up. Marriage, marriage is not about finding a person you can live with. It's about finding the person you can't live without. May your love be long enough to service the times and old-fashioned enough to last forever. Let's make a cheers. Here's to laugh, to love, and happily after after Ryan and Kelly starts their new life as husband and wife. To the new Mr. and Mrs. Basinger, Ryan and Kelly. <laughs>